it's finally time for another Bakugan Geogon Rising products opening. And today we're going to be taking a look at the one and only starter pack that they sent me. Actually, now that I think about it, they only sent me one of each type of product, you know, Core, Ultra, Geogon, Geogon Battle Pack, Deck, and Starter Pack. And I'm really excited because this one actually has Aquos Dragonoid Ultra. And I actually was sent the Pyrus Drago Ultra, but I haven't opened him yet. And I just wanted to open up this pack since I don't think that we've actually seen uh, the cards inside of this yet. I really love the new packaging on it. Definitely think that it's kind of eco-friendly. You know, the package itself is a little bit smaller, less plastic. You can see the three Bakugan over there. Flipping it around, you can see the three Bakugan unfolded over there. Down there, the Baku Clips and the Arena. Overall, super excited. I'm gonna bust this open and let's take a look at what we get inside. Honestly, just taking the Bakugan out of the package and folding up that Drago was like amazing. I'm really excited to actually see the Drago pop open. Nonetheless, here's everything we get. Of course, the Bakugan, the cores, the checklist, and the fold-up guide, all that sort of stuff. And then the cards and the gate trainer. Let's start out with none other than Drago himself, because I'm sure that most people watching this video are just very excited to see how he works. Here is the new Geogon Rising Drago Ultra. And the ball form looks really, really cool. I love how much detail there is. You can see the head right there. Like, honestly, it just looks fantastic. I love how you can see so many different parts of the actual Bakugan when it's folded up. You know, a lot of the other Dragonoids, with the way that they fold it up, you would mainly just see the wings and the tail, but I love how there's actually like these gaps in the wings. So you can see the legs, you can see the arm, you can see the head, the tail is still present. So uh, yeah, without further ado, let's actually roll this guy out and I'm very excited to see how he rolls out. So here is Geogon Rising Drago and my gosh, he is one chunky boy. Like, look at this. He's really dynamic, but when he opens up, you know, there isn't so much that moves out of the actual ball form, at least individually. You know, the, the wings just fold out, the head folds out, just a bunch of smaller movements that just kind of result in this big Bakugan coming out. And there's something like really satisfying about that, since a lot of the other Dragonoids have been super extravagant with the way that they flip, a lot of other Bakugan in general, but uh, I really love the way that this guy looks. He does have some weird proportions, you know, with these really big arms and these small legs, which it does look kind of look like he's almost like squatting down and kind of bending his legs a little bit. You can see his knees down there and his feet back there. But nonetheless, I, I still love this design. Uh, the arms don't move, bit of a shame. I kind of wish they did. The, uh, the box suggests they did, but I guess that was more of like a prototype sort of thing uh, with the, the design. I love the wings. I said earlier how, uh, you know, the wings have little holes in them. I love that because it kind of makes it look like there's like two pairs of wings, basically. And I, I really, I really do like that. You got the tail at the back. Of course, the big spring that allows him to totally flip just right, totally over. My favorite part is definitely the head because the horn is not manual. So this is kind of what it looks like all folded. It goes right there. And then when it folds up, the neck comes up and then the head just kind of drops down. The head isn't actually spring-loaded or anything, so I really, really like that. That's super cool. Let's take a look at the card. I love the Geogon Rising design for Drago there. He uses a Red Fist and a Fist, plus 400 on a Red Fist and plus uh, 502 as the base stats. Kind of not too good. Uh, I suppose, ideally, you would be using the 250 plus three Red Fists, so that basically only puts you up to 1150. Sure, five damage, but I feel like he should have maybe been like base 700. If he was base 700, then he'd go up to 1350. And I feel like then he'd be far better. But I feel like he either just needed more damage or more B power. Or maybe if he had like Red Fist and then a Magic Shield, that would be good. But unfortunately, yeah, I don't think that this guy's going to be too playable, especially with Aqua's Hydra's Core. So next up, we have Auralis Falcor on Core. And I'm actually really excited to have this guy specifically in Auralis because on the checklist, I believe, it actually says that his name is Horus. And this is a thing that's happened a lot before with other Bakugan waves where they accidentally put the kind of prototype name or the test name for the Bakugan on the checklist. So 
learning that his name was Horus before he was officially named Falcron is honestly really cool because I realized that this Bakugan was kind of inspired by ancient Egyptian mythology. And I really wanted an Auralis version of this guy specifically to go with my Auralis Feral from Bakugan Armored Alliance. So getting an Auralis version, especially sent by Spin Master, that is honestly just so cool. So let's pop him open. And it honestly looks really great. I love the use of silver. Like, there's honestly more silver than gold. You know, you got the gold wings and then the gold beak. But then you have the silver eyebrows, the silver pieces here, like kind of on his shoulders, I guess. The silver on the arms. And then the silver back on the bottom wings and then on his back. And I also love the gunmetal being used on the on kind of his midsection as well. Let's take a look at the card. Ooh, I love the light, the little lightning effects. Just, you know, seeing that Auralis version of this Bakugan is so cool. Uh, I feel like if this guy came out during Battle Planet, he would be kind of good because, you know, shields and a little bit of synergy there. But unfortunately, I don't think that this guy is going to be too playable. So here is Chaos Farascal, and I've already taken a look at this as well. Um, Falcon and Farascal also came in that Sharktar starter deck. So, you know, that's a thing. Uh, but nonetheless, I do think it honestly looks a little bit better in Chaos than Pyrus. Be sure to compare this one to the Pyrus one that I reviewed in the Shark Tar deck, and let me know down below what, what faction you prefer uh, for Rascal to be in. Nonetheless, I do believe that she is supposed to be darkest in the show. Let's pop her open. Oops. I just, she rolled away. And there we go. Absolutely adorable. Of course, this is going to look great next to my Chaos Cubo from Battle Planet. Looks like she has 500 B power. Let's actually take a look at the card. And ooh, she has a Helix. Okay, interesting. I definitely like the actual card art on this one more than the Pyrus one. I think it does. It looks a lot more, you know, cutesy. Kind of fits with the the design that she has going on here. 501 Helix plus 600. So that's interesting. I feel like there are far better Chaos Bakugan uh, to be using right now. Maximus Pegatrix Ultra, you know that sort of thing. But either way, though, still a cool Bakugan to have. Let's take a look at some of the other stuff that we get in this pack. Of course, along with the Bakugan, we do get the Gate Trainer and the actual ability cards. Let's take a look. The Gate Trainer over here is the Gate card style. Really cool with the Howl Core right there. I can't tell what Bakugan that is. Maybe it's like Bakugir or something. I don't know. Uh, but you can just look at the different faction bonuses there. Pretty cool. But the part that I'm most excited for are these shields. Or not shields of Astroia. For some reason, I keep saying... Shields of Astroia, but the Secrets of the Geogon cards. We got Flash Attack, we got Shark Tar there, Drago. Uh, can't tell who that Bakugan is back there, but that, I think that's one of the Geogon actually. For two energy plus five damage, we have Cloak Defense. Whoa, okay. This is literally just like Inspire the card. Like literally, this is like you get to scan and inspire. Or if you get bleh, you get to scan and then draw three, which activates Inspire. If you don't know what scan is, I actually talked about it in my Shark Tar deck. Uh, but it basically lets you look at the top part of your deck and then put it to the bottom or top. So that's really interesting. I don't think it'll see play though because four energy is a lot. Uh, ooh, we got a dual faction card. Wow, I didn't expect that. You know, I kind of saw this side of it, so I just saw the Aquos side. I didn't think that it was a uh, a Chaos card, but here we go. It's Aquos Chaos. Aquos Bright Beams. For one energy, you get two damage and you draw one. This is definitely a better card to be using uh, than this one, I'd say. Like this one, you do get a, better, a bigger draw and you do get to do the scan effect. But either way, I feel like just for activating the Inspire, this is definitely a really cool card to use. Anyway though, let's take a look at the Baku Cores in this set. Here are the six Baku Cores in this set. Of course, one Fist, one Red Fist, one Shield. Uh, three shields, sorry, and one magic shield. And unfortunately, other than the Darkest Ventus plus 400 and the plus 500 B minus one Helix, I really don't think that any of these other cores are that good, unfortunately. So guys, that was my review on the new Aquos Dragonoid Geogon Rising starter pack. Leave a comment down below what you thought of this pack. I'm definitely super excited to have the new Dragonoid Ultra in my possession. And of course, probably like tomorrow or in two days, I'll get around to actually opening the standard Dragonoid Ultra. And I'm actually very, very excited to do so. But nonetheless, this Aquos one does look amazing. And I love the way that it opens. Falcron is really cool as well. Again, very happy to have an Orlis version. And Farascal is probably the odd one out in the pack. You know, there's nothing super special about her, but it's still a great design and there's nothing super bad about her either. I'm very excited to start testing out these new Secrets of the Geogon cards. 
hopefully Spin Master will actually set up some sort of like TCG tournament with all the stuff that we were sent. That would be very, very cool. Anyway, though, guys, thank you so much for watching. I'm the detective and I will see you in the next one. Peace out.